So the main difference between nighttime thunderstorms and daytime thunderstorms is the mechanism behind what creates the thunderstorm itself. So I think we're all familiar with um, a hot, humid summer day. And the sun comes up and, and heats that moisture, evaporates it, and that moisture rises. Then it cools and condenses and begins to form cloud matter and grows vertically and creates thunderstorms. So during the day, these thunderstorms can grow to great heights, say 30 or 40,000 feet, even above that. When those thunderstorms then rain out, sort of in the late afternoon or early evening, it tends to send out ripples or waves, if you want to uh, think of it that way. And as the sun sets and the ground begins to cool, that mechanism of the sun heating the ground no longer exists. So the layer of air near the surface of the earth becomes very stable and there isn't that lift mechanism. But what happens is the thunderstorms that grew during the day tend to spread out and they become the forcing mechanism that allows the evening thunderstorms then to grow. There's still available moisture in the atmosphere and these waves or ripples in the atmosphere interact with these, this, these pools of moisture and then allow the thunderstorms to grow. But rather than growing sort of from the surface or the lowest couple of thousand feet and above, they may grow sort of from the middle layers of the atmosphere and grow vertically. The thunderstorms at night can last longer. They can last for hours uh, at a time and, and cross actually uh, great distances. So this summer, we've initiated a field campaign called the Plains Elevated Convection at Night, or PECAN experiment. And it's specifically to go out and look at these nocturnal thunderstorms and, and what causes them. And there are four main initiatives that they're looking at. One is called the Afternoon and Evening Transition, or AET. And that is where we go from the, from the sun heating the surface of the earth and driving those afternoon thunderstorms versus the nighttime thunderstorms. And that transition from day to night is very important. They're also studying something called convective initiation, and that's just the growth of thunderstorms vertically in the atmosphere. And so that convective initiation is what initiates or what causes those storms to grow. They're also studying the low-level jet stream. That's this jet stream of wind in the uh, lower atmosphere that's elevated off the surface that can drive copious amounts of moisture from the Gulf of Mexico, say, up into the central and northern plains of the United States. They're also looking at what's called, um, what are called mesoscale convective systems. And so what these are is there tends to be a preferential pooling of these thunderstorms that are initiated at night. These clusters sort of grow preferentially to the air around them. And so how these clusters of thunderstorms gather and how they persist through the night is, is very important to understanding and, and helping us model these better in computer models. And finally, the last thing is are what are called bores. If you've ever been outside in a, a thunderstorm, um, it may be a hot, humid day, and then all of a sudden you get a, a burst of cool, refreshing wind. And that cool, refreshing wind is just the rainfall falling out from that thunderstorm and initiates downstream. Uh, a wave of, of cooler air, of rain-cooled air, if you will. Over long distances, that rain-cooled air then not only hits the surface and spreads out laterally, but it also interacts with other areas that have been heated during the day. Long distances downstream, that, that air can actually itself begin to get lifted uh, up above, and so it might get lifted above the ground level up to, say, maybe one or two thousand or a few thousand feet. Uh, and persist there well into the night. And so it's these bores of wind that become very important.